Hi everyone, just wanted to put together another short video and discuss some of the topics and the aspects of Aikido that a, we, we, I'm trying to bring out in these vlogs, basically. And one of the ones that always I find to be uh, contentious for a lot of people is the, the lack of physical reality that often exists within Aikido technique. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to call these movement points. In a general Aikido technique, particularly if it's not practiced properly, we have technical training and we have applied training if that's what someone does. Now, not every Aikido club out there will show you applied Aikido training. What you will be doing is technical training. And first, I want to differentiate between these. Technical Aikido is one of one of the best technical martial arts on the planet. It requires movement through your body core. It requires coordination of hips, body, arms, legs, rotational movements, all at the same time. Okay. It requires three-dimensional rotation. So you're not just moving in one direction. You're also moving in one direction forward through rotating through wrists, elbows, shoulders, hips, everything. Technically, it's a very, very difficult martial art. And this is why Aikido, from my perspective, works better for those who have trained in something else first. And that's how I prefer to teach Aikido to people. I prefer it if they have a background in other martial arts prior to coming into the dojo, because otherwise what you get is someone who's not familiar with the concepts of martial arts and the the physicality of that, i.e. what needs to be done in order to win either a competition or a resisted contest. And when I say a competition, I don't mean win a tournament. I'm talking about winning a, a, a competitive movement or a resisted situation. And invariably, that comes only from some of the more hands-on direct martial arts. Now, I came from originally judo when I was very young and karate, which I did for 16 years. And I've now been doing Aikido for over 30 years with an overlap in the middle between karate and Aikido. So I learned from a very early stage. I've always been a chunky lad. <laughs> so uh, when I hit 16, I was immediately into the heavyweight category of the, the adults in competition. So 16 year old, you know, 16 stone, up against a guy, 35 year old, twice my age, built the proverbial brick shit house, fighting him in competition. You quickly learn how to adapt to a very threatening situation. You know, one punch with these guys would literally, in fact, I'd, I'd, I've, I've had several broken bones, I've had busted ribs, a dislocated elbow, all in karate, doing, you know, blocking, striking. Uh, I've had my knee popped out and uh, I had <laughs> about five or six concussions. I can't remember them. That's the weird thing about the concussions. I can't tell you many there were. But that was over like, a kind of 10 year competition career in karate, right up to was about 26 or something like that. I honestly can't remember how long I remained active in competition. I think it was 24. But at the end of the day, uh, I learned a hell of a lot about competitive nature and contesting with a series of skills. And that paid dividends so that when I finally discovered Aikido, you know, uh, <laughs> when the concussion lifted and I remembered who I was and I could finally discover something like Aikido, I found that that awareness and understanding helped me fall into the role better of what it meant to do a martial art that is technical and applied. So the technical side grabbed me immediately. I love the fact that Aikido is a technical martial art. And I've said it, I'll say it again, it's one of, one of the best technical martial arts out there because of the nature of what it does. However, the technical side is only functionable in an agreed dojo situation. Do not hope to use technical martial arts in an external situation if you ever find yourself in trouble. You have to have practiced some sort of applied Aikido. When I talk about applied Aikido, I'm talking about techniques that are either resisted or contested. Now, the difference between these is a resisted technique is one where your partner is not making it easy for you to apply it. Now, that doesn't mean going rigid as a board because that's also unfeasible. Nobody in the street grabs you or hits you and stops in place like a statue so that you can try and apply a fucking technique to them. It doesn't happen. Resisted means that 
As you're trying to apply the technique, they are trying to stop that technique from going on and trying to perhaps get away from you. You know, because anyone who tries to attack you and you move in, say you're, they come in with a strike, a roundhouse punch, and you try to move in and apply an atemi to the face and EQ. They're not going to leave that arm out there. There could be another, but I'm not saying it's going to become a contested situation where they start doing extra punches. But at the end of the day, they punch and then they move away. They don't just wait for it. So they'll strike and then they'll move back. They're resisting your ability to apply the technique. And this becomes really important because otherwise, if we don't accept this type of attack and this type of situation, then all we're doing is technical martial art and it's really important we get that out there to our students. Because anyone who's come to you to learn self-defense, you're lying to them. They're not learning self-defense. They're learning self-defense in a technical situation in a sterilized dojo environment where there is nothing happening except an agreed movement and throw. And that's what the terms mean, uke and nage. One who's throwing and one who's accepting the technique. That's basically what these two terms mean. It doesn't mean that somebody who's throwing and somebody who's being thrown. I suppose it does, but uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the meaning behind it is completely different. So if you are training in technical Aikido and you are happy training in technical Aikido, keep doing it. Just be aware that's what you're doing. You know, and don't get upset when people start talking about what you're doing doesn't work. It does work in the situation that you're providing for it, but your situation is false and it's it's a dojo environment. It's not going to apply itself in any way, shape or form. On the flip side, if you do really rough and grabbing Aikido and then you go and set a technical grading and you fail it, don't get all bitchy about it because you, you like the technical. So you can, yeah, you can apply your techniques, but it's, it's as rough as a robber's dog and it's not going <laughs> to... It looks awful. So it's, there has to be a harmony, the way of harmony, remember? A blending between the two. Now, I know O Sensei had a vision for his type of Aikido, but that was in a very different time, a very different aspect, in a very different world. And the world has moved on since then. Aikido purists want to keep it in the past and they want it to be just this aspect of things. And that's fine. If they want to do that, that's fine. I would like to see Aikido develop and I would like to see it become something that once again, gains a level of respect beyond its technical capability. Because a lot of the techniques that you see are highly applicable, highly applied in various situations, you know. And as a result of that, it, it, it pains me when I see Aikido getting bad-mouthed all the time because of the fact that what people are seeing is a technical demonstration and they're looking at it going, that wouldn't work in the street. They're correct, but they're not seeing the applied aspect of that because it's you really see it being taught very well and that's because the instructors and I'm probably going to put noses out of joint when I say this because the instructors aren't doing it you know it suits them to be in their safe space and you know with their candles and their incense and whatever and doing their special dojo techniques that's fine as long as you're honest about it it's perfectly fine you know it's just Aiki yoga yeah, cool do it I love that stuff I love getting thrown about the mat. I love jumping 15 feet through the air and landing, getting up with a big smile on my face, charging across the mat like something out of a Looney Tunes cartoon. I absolutely love that shit. You know, it's the best feeling in the world. But when we're doing that, I make it plainly clear, you know, nobody's going to do this. You know, <laughs> nobody's going to do this, do you? But it's fun. It's good fun. On the flip side of that, a lot of Aikido can be applied. And... The applied Aikido syllabus does strip down considerably because you're not asked to do ridiculous throws from stupid positions. Uh, but at the end of the day, what sets it apart is the difference between the resistance and the, con uh, the contention. I've completely lost my thread here. Is, this is, is the difference between the resisting aspect and uh, the competitive aspect. I'll go with that. I've completely lost my thread. Sorry, it does happen when you get, to, when you get old. So... Uh, Resisting a technique is where your partner is actively trying not to let the technique happen. Now, as I say, that doesn't mean they lock down because that's also ridiculous. You know, anybody that stands rigid as a statue, once we're kicking the balls or the kneecaps and they're going down, do you know what I mean? Take technique over. Uh, and you, you usually find stupid ways out of it. Uh, and then 
when we look at that, then take that into a more competitive angle as well. The competitive angle is where your partner is trying to not just resist, but counter and effectively win over you in the movement. And that's two completely different things. And both can be applied equally and you have to go through one to get to the other. So in order to understand the competitive nature of this type of training, you have to go through the resisted phase. Because if you don't go through the resisted phase, you will lack the understanding to adapt and change your techniques to the next stage. And I'm going to talk very much about how we in the Aikido community can introduce more resisted training. There's guys, no, I'm not generalizing that. A lot of guys out there do this. You know, hats off to them, much respect for them. I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of good dojo out there, a lot of good stuff on YouTube. If you can filter through all the shit, you'll finally get to see these guys that are actually practicing more physically, more actively, because they want to see Aikido being recognised for what it is and what it's capable of being. Okay? And there is going to be a polarisation, I feel, between the two, because the, the Aikido purists are not going to entertain this, they're not going to want this. And what we've got to be careful is we don't polarise too much so that the applied guys don't do the technical stuff and what we end up with is really scrappy shit Aikido that, that's actually closer to bad Jiu-Jitsu or really bad Aikido Jiu-Jitsu as opposed to Aikido. If we're going to go down that line, then it's, it, it kind of loses everything. And at the end of the day, we've got to be careful don't polarise too far in the opposite direction that Aikido is just seen as a, a fitness activity. You know, it has a great deal of martial concept, a great deal of philosophy, a great deal of uh, technical knowledge. And it's it, it's good for the mind, body and soul, let's face it, when you get down all that, when, when you're doing all that technical stuff. I love it. And you get a great buzz out of it. However, I'm going to do the next video based on the how we in Aikido can incorporate more res resisted, good resisted movement and how we can incorporate good... Uh, competing movement and ways that we can allow that to work to also enhance our technical martial arts. Okay, I don't want to just polarise between the two because what we learn in technical art will be very applicable to what we are doing in the applied arts. And the knowledge we gain from the applied arts will also feed back into the technical art. Because it both requires us to be working intuitively just on different responses. And still true to the heart of Aikido, we are both entering, you and your partner would be entering an agreed level of contention against each other. So nobody's out to try and hurt each other. Everyone's trying to make the techniques work. And it just requires a slightly different, less passive approach from Uki. Okay. But I'll go into that in the next video. Uh, I just wanted to cover that ground on some of these aspects. And I'm going to look at why the... I'll also be doing another one on why the technical martial arts do not work in an applied fashion. So uh, I'll keep these coming. I hope you're all enjoying them. And until then, stay safe and see you later, folks.